Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my tour of the Allen Edmonds Home Factory in uh, Port Washington, Wisconsin. I was invited to come out with members of the Allen Edmonds Enthusiast Group, and this was in May, so it was about six months ago, and I know I haven't put the video out, it's long overdue. I just got really busy and I didn't have a time to put everything together and to show it off to everyone. So I hope you like it. So I uh, get this question a lot in comments and in um, in messages is why I show so many Alan Edmonds on my channel. Why it, why most videos are predominantly Alan Edmonds. And the truth is um, that's what my clients send me to shine and, and to restore. Um, I do get some Alden and some Carmina and uh, some Crockett and Jones here and there, but it's mostly Alan Edmonds. And I think there are three main reasons uh, why Allen Edmonds is so popular here in the U.S. I think the first reason is that they are made in the USA. I know they do have some models made in the Dominican Republic, like their boat shoes and their casual line. And Allen Edmonds is, is pretty transparent and open about that. But their main flagship, Park Avenue, Strands, McAllister's, all of those are made in Port Washington. And I think Allen Edmonds... Um, really connects with the classic American look. Uh, it, it's uh, an homage to the the golden era of business attire here in the United States. The shoes are classic round toe as opposed to the European last, which are narrow, um, slim, and, and they have more of a chisel toe. Second reason why Allen Edmonds uh, is really popular is because uh, they're well-priced. And they usually go on sale throughout the year. So for about two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars, you can you can get a Goodyear welted, made in the USA, full grain calf, um, a shoe. And I can't think of another shoe company that can offer a shoe within the parameters I just listed. Made in the USA, uh, full grain calf, Goodyear welted, and at, at a really good price at about two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars, and normally priced at three hundred and seventy five. And the third reason why Allen Edmonds is, is so popular is because the range of, of sizes and widths they offer. They offer shoes from five, f five triple A, which is very small and really narrow, all the way up to 15 uh, triple E, which is really big and really wide. And you can find anything with in between that. So if you're like me and have a really wide foot, Allen Edmonds is, is a really good choice. Um, Alden and other companies like Carmina and Crockett and Jones, they don't offer um, a variety of widths and sizes like Allen Edmonds does. So Allen Edmonds is really convenient and, and all in all when you add those three together they're really affordable, um, they're made in the USA and they offer uh, such a wide range of sizes and widths. Um, they're pretty hard to beat. I know they're not the best shoe around, I, I don't think they are the best shoe at all, but they fill a they fill a role that's really well received in the U.S. and a lot of people go and buy Allen Edmonds from the classic working man to many presidents of the United States have been inaugurated in, in, in Park Avenues or uh, in other, or wear other, other shoes made by Allen Edmonds. So uh, I was really honored to go and tour their factory. It was a lot of fun. We all had a great time. We went with the president of the company, the director of design, the director of marketing. We toured Woodlore. And uh, I was really impressed with how uh, frank and open the president of the company was with us. He shared his concerns. He let us ask questions. Um, he wasn't, at least in my mind, was not deceptive or uh, shady in any way. He was really open, really honest, and we had a great conversation. We were allowed to ask any question we wanted. And uh, we toured the factory where I saw real American workers on the line, uh, cutting leather, stitching pieces together, um, uh, welting shoes, everything. And it was really cool to see um, the classic American spirit in that company making good shoes. And, and they even had a billboard with all the, uh, the, pro the, the, the models they had put out that day, the amount of shoes that became seconds, the amounts that were returned, the ones that had to be um, you know, taken back for further inspection. So all in all, it was a really open, honest, uh, transparent visit. They were really awesome. They did a great job welcoming us and being great hosts. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sound off below if you have any questions or comments and I'll get back to you. And I'll be narrating portions of this video as well. So enjoy it. The morning began as we were picked up by Alan Edmonds and taken to the Port Washington factory where we met with Jim Cass, who's director of operations. Maybe you remember him from the old recrafting videos that Alan Edmonds put out a couple of years ago. Not a couple, about 10. 10 years ago, I think. And as soon as I saw him, I said, hey, you're that guy from the old videos. And we all had a good laugh. As soon as we were all done meeting up, Jim took us into the factory to begin the tour. 
We began by checking out the lasts the shoe are built around, and they came in all sizes and all widths. You can see them all right here. And we kept walking through the factory. It was amazing seeing all the, the lasts. It was pretty cool. I'd never seen them all. And uh, they have a bunch of them. And then here's the recrafting station where they're getting shoes ready to be recrafted that they had been sent in. Here you can see all the uppers stitched and ready to be applied to the soles and the lowers. And here Jim is showing us the uh, calfskin. Here's raw materials. So all the shoes begin right here with a huge piece of cowhide and uh, the shoes are getting prepared. And he talked to us a little bit about uh, where they source their, their calfskin and what parts of the calf they use, what parts they cut out, what parts they leave behind. I think there's this misconception, and I inevitably run into it on social media all the time. Uh, people say, well, all of Alan Edmonds' shoes are they're cut out and stitched in the Dominican Republic, and then they're sent over to be finished in Port Washington so they can keep their made in the USA uh, their tag, but that's completely untrue. We were there in person, and we saw all of the flagship models of Park Avenue strands being cut out from pieces of leather right then, and then being stitched together, and the shoes being completed right there in Port Washington. So that's a little bit of a myth that you keep hearing, but it's definitely not true. So I wanted to keep the original audio from the factory, but it's just so deafening inside. All the workers have earplugs inside because the machines are running, people are talking. It is just beyond loud inside. So when I left it, uh, I left the original audio in. As soon as I hit play, it was just a complete mess and nothing sounded good. So I turned down the volume on certain areas and decided to uh, narrate over that. So I hope you don't mind, but it, the video just wasn't feasible uh, in the, its original format. There's a piece of shell cordovan, which was pretty cool to see. They were making some pairs there out of shell. Uh, it was cool seeing the workers using uh, the little stencil here <clears throat> and tracing out the pieces of leather they were going to cut and then stitching them together to make the completed upper. Fixed it in there. And then that's what puts the picking and perfing on there. Okay? So this is when the guy starts going off about like that distance in this, right? rough off the front of it because when we tow last it um, that hot melt cement won't stick to the smooth lining so we rough off the front of the lining so we can get it to bond with the insole rib. And then they all come up, well most of these are based, are going to order right now but when they come up uh, from our plant we're essentially hanging on to them here and waiting for an order to come in either to make to stock or to make for a customer. These are probably my favorite shoes. So as you can see, the workers cut out and stitch together all the uppers and then they're sent over here. I was absolutely astounded by how many uppers are made in a day. Jim told us that the company puts out about 5,000 pairs a day and it's absolutely true. You can just look around and see how many, 
how many pairs they're making. It is really cool. I had no idea the factory was just so massive. It's completely huge. And there are hundreds of employees just in there working their, their tails off. They're so diligent and so um, so well-skilled and at what they do. I was just really impressed and it was really cool. Park Avenue right here, huh? Park Avenue. Classic. We keep the Park Avenue and the Strand pretty close because we, we make so many of them, so there's no reason to run all the way to the back to get them. Okay, now that the shoes are ready, the shoes were ready to last, so they would get the upper and place it over this last right here, which is the shoe's size and width. Uh, to complete the shoe, and that was a pretty cool process. Uh, so they took us completely through everything from raw materials all the way to the end. And here, uh, Jim is showing us uh, the material the soles are made out of and the insoles, and that was pretty cool to see. And we had uh, some good conversation, and I just was shocked at how intricate and how uh, how complicated the process actually is. It was really cool. I thought this was really cool. It, it showed them, it showed everyone in the company how many uh, styles had been finished, how many were first quality, how many were returns, how many needed to go back for inspection. I thought that was pretty cool for all the workers to see. And uh, here the last is uh, being molded up against the shoe using some heat. I thought that was really cool to see and uh, it was really unique seeing all of it come together like that. steam or heat so right now we're just like slowly softening that box toe not using any steam on here when she's doing casting we'll inject a bunch of the welt on there now we have to trim that uh, just that little extra perimeter off so it's right even with the top of basically right even with the top so because we're a weld factory we're at, we're basically building the sole as we go along here so we start out with a blocker sole that's quite a bit bigger than the shoe here okay and then we rough round to the edge of the weld basically to start creating the shape of the So here the shoe is completed, the sole is on, and you, as you can see the sole is a little longer than it should be, but here they're cut out, they're sanded down, and they're prepared for the finishing touch. Take it 
So uh, here's a completed shoe, uh, ready for buffing, ready for some cream polish, and ready for ready for some sanding so that the um, the sides of the welt can be really smooth and everything. Uh, and that was pretty cool to see it all come together from the beginning with the leather and then we're at this point. So that was awesome. And of course, this was my favorite part. The finish is applied to the shoe. The shoes are buffed. Um, everything's applied by hand. You can see some of the workers back there. That was obviously my favorite part because <laughs> I love shining shoes. And uh, it was really cool to see that. Um, I didn't know, it, you can see this guy applying some uh, protectant to the sole of these Bond Streets. And that was pretty awesome as well. So seeing everything was really fantastic from beginning to end. It was an all day event. We had lunch there. We visited Woodlore um, where they make cedar shoe trees and uh, all the other products that they make. So that was really fantastic. I hope you liked the video. I wish I could record way more, but I just didn't have the space. But I hope this video helped you to see the inner workings of Alan Edmonds and uh, helped you, it'll help you appreciate uh, what goes into these shoes. Thanks for watching. I hope you, you liked it and I'll see you next time.